What is an American? Michel Guillaume Jean Prevocourt was a Frenchman with red hair, freckles, a small frame, and a cheerful face. When he was 19, he went to Canada and fought in the French and Indian War on the side of the French. Crevocourt was a map maker for General Montcalm. But when Crevocourt saw the English colonies and the freedom they offered, he changed his ideas. He decided to move. He settled on a farm in what is now New York State in 1759. Now, you may be wondering about his strange name. It comes from two French words, crever meaning to break, and cour meaning heart. Crevocour means broken heart. Remember that. When Crevocour moved to New York, he took an English name, Hector St. John. He also kept his French name and used it when he went to France. Today we call him Hector St. John Crevocour. Hector St. John Crevocour fell in love with America. He knew that in Europe, the aristocrats, who are wealthy, privileged people, owned most of the land. In America, most people were yeoman farmers. That means they owned and they worked small farms. Crevocour thought farming was an ideal life and the English colonies an ideal place. Although he also said that some Americans were destroying the land and that others were always bawling about liberty without knowing what it is. Crevocour soon married and had a family. He was so happy living on his farm that he decided to write a book about his life in America. In his book, he asked a famous question. What is an American? He asked. How would you answer that question? This is what Quavercourt said. An American is a new man who acts upon new principles. He must therefore entertain new ideas and form new opinions. In this new nation, Quavercourt wrote, people who, people who were mostly the poor and unwanted of other lands forgot old world hatreds. They married each other and they became successful, self-confident citizens. I could point out to you a man whose grandfather was an Englishman, whose wife was Dutch, whose son married a French woman, and whose present four sons now have four wives of different nations. That kind of thing didn't happen in Europe, especially since most of those people were of different religions. Crevacour was trying to tell the Europeans that something special was happening in this land that they had colonized. We have no princes for whom we toil, starve, and bleed. We are the most perfect society now existing in the world. Here, man is free, as he ought to be. Crevacour said that it was opportunity and freedom that had made Cre America an immense country filled with decent houses and good roads, orchards, meadows, and bridges where a hundred years ago all was wild, woody, and uncultivated. American laws, he said, let people think for themselves. The laws inspect our actions and our thoughts are left to God. Americans, he said, were good citizens who carefully read the newspapers. They freely blamed governors and others. Now when he was talking about blaming governors, Crevacour had a certain New York governor in mind. He was Governor William Cosby. You remember him. <coughs> Crevacour understood that America had been settled by people who were fed up with old world problems. Most Americans didn't like societies that kept rich and poor apart. Here, individuals of all nations are melted into a new race of men whose labors and posterity will one day cause great change in the world. Crevacour was warning Europe. Americans had new ideas and those ideas might even spread beyond the seas. Would Europe listen to the warning? Letters of an American farmer got published in six countries and was immensely popular. It is still read today. But here is something sad. Crevacour's name came true. His heart was broken. It happened when Crevacour took his eight-year-old son to Europe to get his book published. When he came back to America, his wife was dead, his house was burned, and his two younger children were gone. Indians had attacked it. He had found the children in Boston living with strangers. The Indians had let them go. And they all began a new life. This mended Hector St. John Crevacour's heart, at least a little bit. But even that broken heart never caused him to lose faith in the basic decency of all the peoples. Indian, English, French, Spanish, Dutch, 
Amer African, German, and others who were forming a new kind of society in the land he loved. 